Geometry Checkpoint 7, Solving Trig Ratios and the Pythagorean Theorem. Three trig ratios and the Pythagorean Theorem can be used to solve for missing side lengths and angle measurements in any right triangle. So hopefully you remember our sine and our cosine and our tangent uh, involving right triangles. Uh, we've got our angle of theta here, remember this circle the little belt is a Greek letter theta, and that represents our angle. We have our hypotenuse is always the longest side. It's across from the right angle. That's how you know which side is the hypotenuse, so I'm going to go ahead and label that one. Your opposite side is always the one that's across or away from the angle that you're looking at. So for this triangle, my opposite side is going to be y. And then your adjacent side is always next to the angle. It forms part of the vertex right here. So we've got our adjacent side. Now remember that the opposite and the adjacent leg depend on which angle you're looking at. So for example, if we had been looking up here at this angle, then my opposite side would be x, because that would be across from it or away from it. And my adjacent side would be y, because that would be the one next to it. So we've got. Tangent of my angle is going to be my opposite leg over my adjacent leg. Sine is going to be my opposite leg over my hypotenuse. And cosine is going to be my adjacent leg over my hypotenuse. So again, you have to look at the picture and see which pictures you're given. And then whichever side you're given, that's how you know which trig function to use. So if you have an adjacent and an opposite, you're going to use tangent. If you have an adjacent and a hypotenuse, you're going to use cosine. So, the Pythagorean theorem states that the sum of the squares of the legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse in a right triangle. It's most frequently seen as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And when we first derived this formula, we were looking at triangles that had legs of a and b and c and how they formed the areas. Um, I personally prefer the leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. I think that's a little more easy to see which side is leg and which side is hypotenuse. But you can use either of them. And then for the triangle that we have here, the legs are going to be x and y, and then your hypotenuse would be h. So you'd have x squared plus y squared plus h squared. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples. So for example one, a rectangle has a diagonal of 16 centimeters and one side of 11 centimeters. What is the length of the other side? So we always want to draw a picture when we have a word problem. So let's go ahead and draw my rectangle. And since we're just studying quadrilaterals now, we know rectangles have all right angles, so I'm going to go ahead and add those. Now, I'm sure we all remember that a diagonal is a line that goes from one angle in a polygon to another angle that is not a side. So, we're starting here at this angle, and then we're going to go up to the other one. So reading through our given information, we know the diagonal is 16 centimeters. And we know that one of the sides is 11. And it doesn't really matter which side we make 11 centimeters. So we need to find the length of the other side. So again, I'm going to use leg squared plus leg squared, but you can absolutely use a squared plus b squared. leg over here, so I'm just going to make it an x, since everyone likes x, it's nice and easy to work with. So we've got x squared for my missing leg, and then I've got my other leg, which is going to be 11 squared, and then my last one is going to be hypotenuse, which is 16 in this room. So now I'm going to solve, and so the first thing I need to do is I need to square everything. So x squared is just x squared, 11 squared is 121, and 16 squared is 256. So now I'm going to want to subtract 121 from both sides. So I'm left with x squared equals uh, 135. So now remember, when you have an x to the second power, in order to get it by itself, you need to take the square root. That's how you undo a square sum. So I got x equals, and I'm just going to pull up a calculator real quick here. Figure all this out. So I have the square root of 135, which gives me 11.6. So that's going to be my answer. 
And then since they told us centimeters, we're going to put centimeters because we always want to remember our units when we can. So that's how you use the Pythagorean theorem. Now, if we had been given both of the legs as opposed to a leg and a hypotenuse, we would have had, say, 16 squared plus 11 squared, and you would have added them together, and then you would have taken the square root on that side. That's how it would have changed. Let's look at another example. So now we've got a right triangle. We know that the angle is 40 degrees. We know one of the sides is 11, and we're asked to find the missing side length. I always tell my students when they're first starting out, you should label every single side so you know which side's opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. So looking at this triangle, I always start with hypotenuse. I think that's the easiest one to figure out. It's the side that's slanted. It's the side across from the right angle. It's the longest side. Over here is my hypotenuse, so I'm going to put an H for hypotenuse. Students tend to have a lot of trouble of figuring out which is the adjacent side and the opposite side. Now remember, your adjacent side is the one that's next to it. It's the one right by the angle. So it's going to be this one here, since we already have my hypotenuse stated. And then my opposite side is across or away from it. So we're going to put an O for opposite. So since I have the adjacent side and I want to find the hypotenuse, I know that's going to be using my cosine. So I've got my cosine of my angle of 40. And I always like to put things over 1. It makes it, I think, a little easier for the next step. My adjacent side is 11, so that's going to go on top. And my hypotenuse is x, so that's going to go on the bottom. So you're going to go ahead and cross multiply. 1 times 11 is 11. And then we've got cosine of 40 times x. So we got cosine of 40 times x. So I divide both sides by cosine of 40. Because again, if I'm multiplying by cosine, I'm going to need to divide it in order to undo it. So cosine of 40 divided by cosine of 40 cancels, just leaving you the next. And again, I'm going to go back to my calculator. So I've got 11 divided by the cosine of 40. Now you might want to check and make sure your modes are right. Um, the graphing calculators tend to default to radian as opposed to degree. Also, a lot of students will write everything perfectly on their paper, but then when they go into their calculator, instead of writing 11 divided by cosine of 40, which is what we have written on our paper, uh, they will actually go in and put 11 times cosine of 40. So just make sure that you always remember to put parentheses and you put the, what you're typing in the calculator on your paper. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and enter and it looks like it's going to be 14.4. So go back and take it, write that down. And I don't have any units for this one, so I'll just put units. And that's going to be my answer. Now I got one more example for you and this one's going to be a word problem. So let's take a look at A 10-foot ladder is leaning against the side of a house. If the top of the ladder touches the house 9 feet above the ground, what is the angle made by the ladder and the ground? So just like I said in the first one, whenever you have a problem that doesn't give you a picture, you need to draw a picture. Geometry deals all with pictures, so we really want to make sure that we're focusing on what we are looking at in these pictures. So I'm going to go ahead and make my house. There's my green grass. And let's add the house itself, which is just going to be a box in this one. All right. So we have a ladder, which is leaning against the side of the house. So I'm going to go ahead and add my ladder. Ladders are nice and straight. And they tell me that the ladder is 10 feet. That's right here, 10 foot ladder. Now, they also tell me that the ladder reaches up nine feet above the ground. So I know that this side over here is going to be nine feet tall. Now, we already know that the base of the ground is here. And we know this is going to be a right angle because we want to build our houses so that they go straight up. We don't want them leaning because then they're going to fall over. So that's how we know that we have a right angle and therefore a right triangle. <coughs> What is the angle made by the ladder 
and the ground. So we're looking at this angle down here. So just like I said on the previous problem, we always want to make sure that we go back and figure out which side is opposite adjacent and hypotenuse. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Um, looking around, I've got my right angle here, so across from it is going to be my opposite side, which will be the 10 feet, or I'm sorry, it's going to be the hypotenuse. Opposite of the right angle, which is the hypotenuse. Sorry about that, guys. Um, my angle is down here, so across from that is going to be this 9 feet. And then my adjacent side will be my next side, which will be here on the bottom. So I know my opposite side, I know my hypotenuse, and I'm finding the angle, so I'm going to be using sine this time. So I've got the sine of my angle x, which is 9 over 10, since my opposite side goes over my hypotenuse. The hypotenuse always goes on the bottom. Now hopefully you remember from earlier that when you have the sine of a variable or top sine of a variable or tangent of a variable, the way that we undo it, the way that we get rid of it, is we're going to do inverse sine. And I know a lot of students call it sine negative 1, um, but it's technically called an inverse sine. And those two cancel each other out. Just like if you were adding and then you subtracted and they cancel each other out. So we take inverse sine of both sides leaving me with just x divided by 1, or x. And so now I need to go back to my calculator, and I've got inverse sine. So we've got inverse sine of 9 divided by 10. And again, make sure you put everything inside your parentheses. And then we're going to hit enter, and we get 64.2. Now remember, since this was an angle, we want to make sure we put a degree sign, because we're solving for an angle, and the units on angles are always degrees. So hopefully that helped clarify for you a little bit how to solve problems using the trigonometric functions and the Pythagorean theorem. If you have any further questions, you're always free to email me at m-e-r-e-n-e-r -E -E at d131.org. Thank you and have a good day.